Hello everyone, Miss York here, and I'm so glad you decided to join us again for our weekly reading. Tonight we'll be reading you a story entitled, Arnie the Donut. Now, I don't know about you, but I love some donuts. This is a fiction story written by, or cooked up by Lori Keller. And after the story, we have a fun challenge that me and Miss Spurlock are going to do. I hope you stay tuned to the end because you're not going to want to miss this challenge. Ready? Sit back, relax, and let's cook up our story. Arnie the Donut. Downtown Bakery. Arnie turned out to be just the kind of donut he had hoped to be. Chocolate covered with bright colored candy sprinkles. Look at all my sprinkles. There must be a million of them. He was made very early in the morning at the downtown bakery, home of the best donuts around. Arnie was proud to be one of the best. He knew that people all over town made special trips to his bakery to buy donuts of their very own. As Arnie sat on the tray, which had just been placed in the donut case, he took a moment to reflect on the amazing things that had happened to him that morning. He was cut into a ring, deep fried, cooled, iced, sprinkled, and he even got a name. Arnie looked around and saw all sorts of donuts sitting nearby. He tried to strike up a conversation with an apple fritter on the next tray, but she didn't seem to want to talk. How about that there deep fryer? Any relative to Larry Fryer? Want to cut my sprinkles? <sighs> I guess it is rather early. Maybe she's not a morning donut, Arnie saw. It was 6 a.m. and the baker had just hung the open sign in the window. Arnie was fascinated as he watched customers stream into the bakery. One by one, donuts were chosen, placed in paper bags, and whisked away with their new owners. Some went by the dozen in giant boxes. Goodbye, Arnie yelled to each and every donut. Have a great trip. This is so exciting. I wonder who will choose me. Just then. Arnie looked up and saw a man pointing right at him. What? Before he could say another word, he was pulled from the tray, placed in a paper bag of his very own. Thank you, Mr. Bing. Have a nice day. Arnie heard the baker man say, Mr. Bing. That's a fine name, Arnie decided. I can hardly wait to meet him. The ride to Mr. Bing's apartment was a little bumpy. Arnie was grateful for the soft napkin the baker had so thoughtfully placed underneath him in the bag. He had never ridden in a car and he wished he could look out the window to see all the sights. But more than anything, he wished to meet Mr. Bing. Why does he keep me in this bag? Arnie wondered. Finally, the car came to a stop and they were home. Mr. Bean carefully removed Arnie from his paper bag and placed him on a clean, shiny plate. Oof, what a handsome plate, Arnie thought to himself. I'm not crazy about the design. I prefer a more modern look, but it's not the little paint can't fix. Mr. Bing gently lifted Arnie from his new plate. Well, isn't that cute, thought Arnie as he closed his eyes and smiled. He wants to hold me. As Arnie relaxed in Mr. Bing's hand, he felt himself moving higher and higher away from his plate. When he opened his eyes to see where he was going, he discovered he was headed straight for Mr. Bing's open mouth. What are you doing? shouted Arnie. Mr. Bing was stunned. He dropped Arnie back onto the plate. I was going to... Uh... To eat you, he replied in shock. Eat me, Arnie shrieked. Why would you do a thing like that? Do you make a habit of eating all your house guests? No, of course not. Then why did it suddenly occur to you to eat me? 
Well, because you're a donut. That's what donuts are for, to eat. Do you mean, to tell me, you've done this before? Yes, I eat a donut every day, Mr. Bing said sheeplessly. Arnie froze. He felt sick and frightened and angry. He thought to himself for a moment, I must put a stop to this right away. I'll call the bakery and I'll warn the others. Whoever's left, that is. Arnie knew that there was no time to waste and he needed to be very sneaky in order to keep his plan for Mr. Bing. He turned to Mr. Bing and said in the sweetest voice, Excuse me, sir, but I don't believe we've been properly introduced. My name is Arnie. Um, hello, Arnie? Mr. Bing stammered. I'm Mr. Bing. It's nice to eat you. I mean, meet you. Mr. Bing, will you be a dear and allow me to use your telephone? Uh, well, okay, said Mr. Bing, and he handed Arnie the phone. As quickly as he could, Arnie dialed the number to the bakery. The baker answered the phone. Downtown bakery, home with the best. Mr. Baker Man, Baker Man. Arnie frantically whispered, this is Arnie the Donut. Do you remember me? You made me at 515 this morning and I was bought about 20 minutes ago by a man who goes by the name of Mr. Bing. Do you know who I am? Yes, Arnie, the baker announced. What can I do for you? Now, I don't want to alarm you, but just moments ago, the man tried to eat me. And not only that, he claims to have eaten hundreds of us. I'm going to make you run for it, but I wanted to warn you so that if you see him coming into the baker again, stop him. Oh, my Arnie, I, I thought you understood. That's why I make donuts for people to eat. I can't believe it, Arnie gasped. Are the other donuts aware of this? Well, I think so, said the baker. Oh, let me ask him to make sure. Mm. Do you donuts know you're going to be eaten? Oh, yes, we know. We are delicious. Did you hear that, Arnie? The baker asked. Arnie was crushed. The phone dropped from his hand. He heard all he needed to hear. Arnie forgot about his plan to escape. He collapsed back onto the plate, glanced up at Mr. Bing and muttered, All right, then. Let's get this over with. Go ahead, eat me. Mr. Bean gazed down at Arnie. I'm not going to eat you, Arnie, he said reassuringly. I just wouldn't feel right about it now. Really? Well, I'm glad you've come to your senses. But since I'm not going to eat you, Mr. Bean continued, I have to figure out something else to do with you. I paid good money for you. I don't want to be wasteful. Oh, no, 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 no. Of course not. Of course not. What we need to do is each make a list of things I can do with you instead of eating you. Between the two of us, I know we'll come up with something. Oh, good plan, Mr. Bing. This will be a breeze because I'm good at lots of stuff. They both feverishly wrote down their ideas. When they were finished, Mr. Bing asked, Would you like to read yours first? Sure thing, Mr. Mr. Bing can do with me instead of eating me. Do you need a ballroom dance partner? Uh, no, I don't dance. You could use a personal fitness trainer. Hmm, I get too sweaty. Well, how about a portrait painter? Oh, heavens no. Would you like me to entertain you at your p -p -p parties I don't throw parties. I could be your chauffeur. But you can't see over the steering wheel. I'd make a great bodyguard. Who could, who could you protect me from? A cookie? All right, Mr. Bing. Let's hear what you came up with. Okie dokie. I just know you'll like some of these. Things I can do with Arnie instead of eating him. I could use you as a pin cushion. Oh, no. Too painful. Okay, how about an air freshener for my car? How about? No. Would you like to be a picture frame? I don't imagine so. Mm -hmm. I need a new bowling ball. Well, don't look at me. Okay, you'd make a fine paperweight. Boring. 
Then what about a doorstop? Try again. But there was nothing else on Mr. Bing's list. They were completely out of ideas. Arnie and Mr. Bing were exhausted. They felt terribly disappointed. After a few mo moments of awkward silence, Mr. Bing finally spoke. I'm sorry, Arnie, but it's clear that we can't agree on anything for you to do around here. This is difficult for me to say, but I think it would be best if you found another home. I know, said Arnie, fighting back the tears. I'll just be on my way then. Is it all right if I keep this napkin to pack up all my loose sprinkles? Of course, Mr. Bing replied sadly. As soon as I get a job, I'll pay you back the money that you spent on me. That's not necessary, Arnie. Arnie shook Mr. Bing's hand and thanked him for his kindness. Mr. Bing opened the door, and as Arnie left, he paused and said, I guess donuts really are only good for eating, aren't they? Both waved goodbye, and Arnie was gone. Mr. Bing stood at the window and watched Arnie walk away. He walked past the flower beds, the mailboxes, the apartment's office. He passed the tennis court, the swimming pool, the clubhouse. But when Arnie reached the no dogs allowed sign at the end of the driveway, Mr. Bing suddenly had a new idea. Arnie, Arnie, wait up, yelled Mr. Bing as he ran after him. Arnie turned back and stopped when Mr. Bing caught up with him. He was out of breath. I can't believe I didn't think of this earlier, Mr. Bing panted. Arnie, I've always wanted a dog and could never have one because they're not allowed here. But there's no sign that says no donuts allowed. Arnie perked up when he realized what Mr. Bing was thinking. Would you like to take walks and play fetch? You bet I would. Can you do tricks like rolling over? Look at me. I was made for rolling over. Well, then, there's only one thing left to ask, Arnie. Will you be my donut dog? Oh, Mr. Bing, I would love to be your donut dog. From that moment on, Arnie and Mr. Bing were inseparable. Arnie liked being a donut dog even better than he liked being a donut. He went through a short phase, though, of chewing on the furniture and barking at the mailman. But after a crash course in obedience school, he graduated first in his class. Everywhere the two of them went, people would stop and pet Arnie. No one had ever seen a donut dog before. Arnie and Mr. Bing had so much fun together. Arnie was the best pet Mr. Bing could ever hope for. And Mr. Bing was Arnie's best friend. And that's the end. I hope you guys liked our story, Arnie the Donut, cooked up by Lori Keller. I have Miss Spurlock here with me today, and I have challenged her to something. We're going to see... Which one of us can hold the most donuts in their mouth? Now, to begin with, we both have 15 donuts on our plate. So the person with the most donuts left at the end <laughs> is the loser. Okay. All right? So we want to see how many we can fit in our mouths. Now, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Miss Burlock kind of got a big mouth. <laughs> So she will probably win. We do want to stay as clean as we... These napkins are tiny. We're going to make a bib okay. out of napkins. All right, this is not an eating contest. This is a who can hold the most in their mouth in contest. Mouth. Okay? Are you ready? I'm ready. Can we chew it or like do we just shove them in there? Just shove them in. Can't chew them. I'm going to stretch my cheeks real quick. Put a bubble in my mouth. All right. Ready? I'm ready. Go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.
I'll swallow mine. <laughs> All right, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight left on my plate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah! <laughs> I'm the winner! <laughs>